Another myth for students is that cramming is the best study strategy. I am going to cram right before my exam and I'm going to do really well. And yes, I know from experience that sometimes works as well. But if you really want to learn the information, especially if you're trying to get uh, students prepared for college, where they're going to have to know this information beyond just on an exam, you want to encourage students to space out their study over time. And I'll show you a simple example in a minute. But spaced practice, not cramming right before a test, but revisiting information or even studying a few problems on Monday and then a few on Tuesday and a few on Wednesday as opposed to all of it on Thursday is a really good way of helping students and students helping themselves to learn information over the long term. Unfortunately, it's, it's maybe easier pedagogically, but it's not the easiest for students if you give them a whole unit on decimals and then you move on to something completely different. You want to make sure you're continuing to revisit that material over time. So for example, in college mathematics, uh, Rohr and Taylor asked students to um, calculate how many permutations of uh, a certain set of problems, how many permutations would be possible in these problems. Uh, if you remember permutations, they're not the easiest. They're not one of my favorites either. Um, and here they use two sets of students. Uh, again, about 100 college students. Either students crammed and they learned these permutation problems. They learned 10 problems during a session in one week, sort of on one day. Or the students learned five problems over the course of two weeks. So they learned five problems on Wednesday, and then they learned a new set of five problems the following Wednesday. So they're still spending the same amount of time studying. The only difference is, should I study all 10 on one day, or should I study five on one day and then wait and study five a few days later? And here we're looking to see how, they, how students did after one week or after four weeks. And you see a huge difference after four weeks. Students who simply spent the same amount of time studying, but studied five questions one week and five questions the next week, have doubled the performance of students who tried just sort of cramming and remembering these problems all in one week session. So of course we know that students, I think, are just going to continue cramming for exams. <laughs> so how can you as a teacher help encourage them to space out information? So one way to do that is for you as a teacher to provide frequent exams. This again ties into the first cognitive strategy I talked about with retrieval practice. If you're providing frequent exams, especially if, for instance, with decimals, you're giving an exam in March, and then an exam in April, and then an exam in May, all over decimals, you're essentially forcing the students to space their learning. You're helping them to revisit that material frequently over multiple delays. Another trick is to help provide cumulative exams. So as opposed to just a midterm and a final, if your final, for instance, well, and hopefully you're, you're not providing just a midterm and a final, but you begin to encourage low stakes quizzing, but if you give students cumulative exams, maybe a cumulative midterm and a cumulative final, then again, that's a way of encouraging them to look back their material from a few months before and relearn it. And again, I know especially with space practice, kids tend to cram before exams, but for college readiness where students need to know this information throughout college, it really is helpful to prepare them with space practice. Mm -hmm.